Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. In state legislatures across the country, very similar pieces of legislation are appearing. Pieces of legislation that will limit unions' right to bargain and organize. Privatization of schools at the public school level, even at the college level. And it's not just that state assembly members are having similar, similarly good ideas, if you like those kinds of legislation. In fact, there's quite an organized campaign writing these pieces of legislation and, and lobbying for them at the state level. Now joining us to discuss a recent investigative report he did for Truth Out is Steve Horn. Steve is a journalist based in Madison, Wisconsin. His work's been featured in The Guardian, The Nation, and Truth Out. He's a research fellow at the blog, The Smog Blog. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Thanks for having me. So uh, we, we've, we've done some reporting on the real news about ALEC, which is one of these groups that's been funded by a lot of right-wing billionaires to help write and push this kind of legislation. Uh, so your, your research, if I understand it correctly, was that Alec's not the only organization doing this, and you went a little further into, into what they are doing. So, so what did you find? Sure. So um, what my uh, investigation attempted to unpack was, is Alec unparalleled as it's been said to be? And if it is or if it is not, uh, what else exists? Uh, the investigation took me to many other organizations that are structured similarly to Alec, uh, I guess what makes ALEC unparalleled is that it's just the right-wing ideology. That part is the unparalleled portion of it. But there are many other organizations okay, well, like For ALEC. people that don't know the story, just quickly tell us ALEC, what ALEC is, and then what are the other organizations? Sure. So ALEC was an organization founded in 1973 by Paul Weyrich, a right-wing political activist. Uh, what it, do, what it says it does is it uh, provides education for state legislators. Uh, they tend to be conservative Republican Party legislators in state houses around the country. What they do in practice is they have several meetings a year in which uh, lobbyists, so first of all, the, the premise is that corporations fund ALEC to a tune of about 98%. On top of that, uh, what happens at the meetings are lobbyists pay a small fee to be there they produce uh, what they call model bills, which are voted on in a closed door fashion that become uh, quote model bills for the state houses around the country. These bills have passed um, many bills. They, they boast of their successfulness and uh, looking at the agenda, you can see their success in areas ranging from uh, the charter school agenda, energy agenda, anti-regulation agenda and energy, uh, you know, higher education, you name it, uh, NRA has a big influence in terms of gun policy. That's how Alec really got famous was due to the Trayvon Martin case and the stand your ground portion of what made Trayvon Martin's killing possible, which was part of an Alec model bill. And that's what really uh, put Alec on the map nationally. And that's what got corporate media talking about it much more. And uh, before. The, the Republican uh new Republican platform has a big piece of defense of that, including unlimited amounts of ammunition and things like that. Uh, exactly. So well, tell us then what other groups like ALEC did you find? And then give us some specific examples of legislation that's resulting from all of this. Sure. So in my investigation, I found that ALEC was actually an organization whose structure was modeled after an organization founded in 1933 called the Council of State Governments or CSG. Uh, CSG basically does something very similar in that it produces model bills at annual meetings. They call it su suggested state legislation or SSL. At, uh, so at their meet you know, every year they produce these. Unlike ALEC, uh, they actually do make them public. So you can look at those model bills. What happened with ALEC is these bills had to be uh, Produced, uh, leaked by a whistleblower, and that's why this whole Alec Expose uh, project kind of blew up in the past couple of years, actually since last summer. But going back to CSG, uh, what what that is is it's a trade association. So like Alec, it says it provides education to uh, legislators and in, in state legislatures around the country. Unlike Alec, which I said before, is ninety eight percent corporate funded. Uh, CSG is 43% corporate funded, which means it's also very heavily taxpayer subsidized. But going back to the parallels between CSG and ALEC. Uh, just one second. What, what do you mean sure. by taxpayer subsidized? 
so basically, it's uh, every, in, in state budgets, every two years, uh, states set aside uh, an appropriation for uh, the you know, CSG and another group that I looked into, the National Conference of State Legislatures. Uh, so a sizable portion of budgets, uh, usually what I saw was in the range of $200,000 to $300,000 a year is set aside to fund groups like CSG uh, for education of legislators. Now, is this so, coming from the Democratic and Republican controlled uh, assemblies? Yes. And uh, I guess that's the key difference between CSG and we'll say ALEC is that uh, ALEC is mostly you know, basically 100 uh, percent Republican Party participation. Uh, CSG is bipartisan 100 percent. I mean, if you look at who attends and Talk to I've talked I talked to a lot of legislators who attended, especially in the Democratic Party, because I was trying to show kind of the parallels and similarities and such between CSG and Alec. Uh, there are lots of Democrats who are involved in CSG, and you know what is interesting is that although it's uh, they're receiving this education, the education is often still the, sort of the education that lobbyists give at the CSG conferences, like at Alec conferences, because CSG's conferences can be sponsored by corporations, which allows them to send three or four lobbyists to these conventions. Well, to is, there, is there much different than the agenda of CSC and, and ALEC in terms of the kind of legislation that comes out of it? Uh, oftentimes, uh, we'll say that the bills are actually exactly the same. So you'll see uh, that uh, cor uh, corporate lobbyists are smart. Uh, they'll push their agenda and make sure that the uh, Republican Party Put, uh, pushes it in state houses around the country, but they'll also make sure that Democrats are pushing the same agenda. So if you look, there's a really interesting bill on hydraulic fracturing, which was passed at the CSG National Conference in Austin, Texas in 2011. Uh, basically what that, that bill says is that uh, fracking chemicals should be there should be transparency in what chemicals are shown, which sounds good, except that there are tons of loopholes in the bill, and the bill was actually written by ExxonMobil. Uh, months later, that same bill was passed at an ALEC conference. That's one example. Yeah, then if give you look give at, us other examples of the kind of legislation and bills you're talking about. Sure. So if you look at another area, so that was energy. If you look at higher education, uh, one of the shared funders of uh, CSG and the National Conference of Leg State Legislatures and ALEC until the summer when they dropped their funding of ALEC was the Lumina Foundation. The Lumina Foundation is actually heavily funded by Sally May. And what they do is push higher education privatization agenda. Um, if you connect the dots here, that means that uh, higher education in the United States will be more expensive, which means students will be taking out more loans uh, Sally May is the number one uh, provider of student loans. They make ton, you know, billions of dollars on student loans. And so that's, a, you know, they're basically what they, instead of producing model bills, sometimes they produce studies, which uh, show the need for in state houses to uh, provide flexibility or privatization of public research universities. Yeah, give that's us other, other examples of, of, of legislation like this. Sure. Uh, if you look at uh, the virtual charter school agenda uh, in CSG and in ALEC, uh, they're identical. They both have they both have model bills on the books to promote uh, virtual charter schools. Same thing with uh, any anything with K through 12. Uh, they're they're matching bills in each one. Uh, if you if you look at who was which lobbyists were in attendance for CSG and ALEC, it's many of the same lobbyists because. Uh, uh, Common Cause has provided sort of these lists of lobbyists. They got the, they obtained them uh, of lobbyists who were in attendance at of Alex meetings since 2010. Well, CSG also provides those. Uh, they didn't have to be leaked by the whistleblower. They just make it public, and you see many of the same corporations, many of the same lobbyists who are at both pushing bills. Uh, in charter schools, uh, you know, for example, in this, these fracking bills. Uh, so it's far-reaching agenda. If you look at yes, some, of, some of what I saw in, in your research had to do with privatization, uh, at, even at the college level being promoted. Uh, I, th I think I saw a quote was, take the state out of state universities. Uh, what, what's, what's, what's the intent there? 
Uh, the intent there is, if you look at the the battle, there's a, the battle that occurred at University of Wisconsin in uh, spring of 2011 uh, with this thing called the New Badger Partnership. What what uh, proponents of this uh, type of legislation are saying is that states are broke and they need uh, more. Uh, these universities need like, there isn't much, there isn't funding for the universities. Uh, that there's no state funding available, so they need more flexibility from the state. They need to become sort of a charter of the state, like charter schools, in which the state provides some funding but does not directly oversee how uh, the university functions, like the K through 12 schools functions. The point of it is that uh, essentially, when it becomes more private, it means first of all higher tuition, which I talked about before, which means more student loans need to be taken out. Second of all, it's just the fact that with less public funding, it means more and more private funding goes into the university, which means more and more uh, funding for corporate research, especially at big research universities like University of Wisconsin, where you know Halliburton CEO is on the board of directors of the business school, where um, Halliburton has a research center uh, in the geosciences department, where you know, pretty much m many many. Uh, departments of the university are producing research for multinational corporations. So it's a it's a clever agenda. Uh, but if you really pat, you know, kind of pick through it, you see that it's for big business. Now, one of the things that happened with some of the publicity Alec attracted is some of the big corporations uh, like uh, Coca-Cola and Kraft and McDonald's kind of dump their association with Alec, but you're saying they haven't really gotten out of the, out of the lobbying business. So why did they dump the association and then and what, what are they doing now? I would say that they, you know, there's been a pretty aggressive campaign to push corporations to pull out of Alec. Much of it has to do with a partisan agenda. Uh, different NGOs want Alec to uh, Basically, they don't want these corporations affiliated with ALEC because ALEC is pushing through voter ID bills, which is another bill that uh, disenfranchises voters, uh, especially college voters and minority voters who tend to vote for the Democratic Party. So they say that corporations shouldn't be funding behavior of this sort. Uh, so many corporations have actually dropped ALEC because they don't see that type of legislation really benefiting their bottom line. They've said so themselves. Importantly, though, that does not mean that their actual corporate agenda changes at all. It doesn't mean that they are you know, actually changing their behavior as corporations. It just means that they can drop ALEC and use it as a public relations opportunity to show themselves as being responsible while pushing the same agenda in groups like the Council of State Governments and the NCSL, the National Conference of State Legislatures, and other uh, like the National Governors Association. Right. Okay, well, well, for those of you that want to see Steve's report, and it's very rich with detail, uh, we'll put a link uh, to the Truth Out piece underneath, uh, underneath the video player. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Steve. Thanks a lot. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.